Hello, my friends. D.L. Anderson here. Welcome back to Transformation by Truth podcast as we share the truth concerning these last days and what you must do to save yourself from the violent times that are just ahead. Today's podcast is a word of truth accounting of the end times. The end is coming. The end is near. Today's podcast is entitled End Times 244, The People and Places of the Restoration, Part 4. The podcast objectives are Analyze the Day of Reckoning Upon the Nation of Israel. Analyze Messiah's Crucial Warning to his disciples in times past, analyze the captivity of continental Africa, and initiate a review of the captivity of the Americas. This lesson contains timelines and other visuals. Therefore, if you are listening to the podcast, I advise you to watch the video version on our website or YouTube or request a PDF of the lesson so you can add the visual effect. None survived. Now, in the most recent podcast, we analyzed two of the four dispersions of the nation of Israel. Specifically, we analyzed the Assyrian captivity of the Northern Kingdom and the Babylonian captivity of the Southern Kingdom. In this podcast, we will analyze the third and fourth dispersions of the nation of Israel. Let's start where we left off in the most recent podcast. If you recall, the Southern Kingdom went into captivity in Babylon. 70 years after the beginning of this captivity, Cyrus, king of Persia, made a decree allowing the children of Israel to return to the land of promise. Although some remained in the land of Persia, those ardent followers of Yahuwah returned and rebuilt the nation. From now, we must analyze the fate of those who returned. For we know the fate of those who remained. To it, the tribes who were lost to the east wind are now outcasts in the eastern corner of the world. Likewise, the tribes who were lost to the north wind are now outcasts in the northern corner of the world. However, the tribes who returned to the land of promise, remained in the land for many years, at the first, as peaceful members of the Persian Empire. But alas, the Persian Empire did not last. In the sure course of time, Media Persia was conquered by ancient Greece, marking the beginning of the times of the Gentiles. Without going too much into the details of those times, those were difficult days for the nation. And yet, the nation continued and maintained the land of promise. Then again, in the sure course of time, the Greek Empire fell to the Roman Empire. It was during this time that Yahushua Messiah was born and a day of reckoning was upon the nation. And when our forefathers should have embraced the arm of Elohim, they rebelled as those before them, and they crucified the Savior of the world. As we discussed in prior podcasts, this led to the spiritual death of the nation which led to its physical annihilation in 70 CE during the siege of Jerusalem. 
And as it had been written, none who partook of this judgment survived. This evil day would come. Now, the question of the hour is, if everyone in the land of Israel was killed during the siege of Jerusalem, how did the nation survive? The answer, those who believed in the teaching of Yahushua Messiah fled Jerusalem before the Roman army under Titus laid siege to the city and raised it to the ground. Not only is this a matter of historical fact, the scriptures testify to this timely departure. Yahushua Messiah warned his disciples that this evil day would come, and he told them to flee Jerusalem at the appointed time. Matthew 24, 15 through 18 reads, when you see the abomination that lays waste, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, set up in the set-apart place, he who reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Yehuda flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not come down to take whatever out of his house. And let him who is in the field not turn back to get his garments. Now, in this word of prophecy, Yahushua Messiah is revealing the signs of the times, specifically the signs associated with the first occurrence of the last days as it pertains to the overarching model of the end times. As you can see by the timeline below, the destruction of Jerusalem marks the first of the three major end times events. And the seasons leading up to this destruction constitute the first model of the last days. Along these lines, the nation at that time was in a similar position as the nation at this time. The same way we are living in the last days preceding a major end times event, they were living in the last days preceding a major end times event. Notwithstanding, there is a major difference between the last days we are living in and the last days which were upon the nation of Israel prior to the siege of Jerusalem. Consider this. The last days endured by the nation in times past were leading to their destruction and their complete annihilation. On the other hand, the last days we are enduring are leading to our restoration and recovery and a glorious return to the land of promise. Now, this reality brings us back to the question I asked at the beginning of this section. That is, how did the nation survive the destruction of Jerusalem and where did they go? The answer is a key point of interest I ask you to consider carefully. Seeing as the nation of Israel was destroyed during the siege of Jerusalem, the torch from thence was carried by those faithful disciples who had the spiritual mind to flee Jerusalem and the land of promise before the Roman Empire came to execute the judgment of Elohim. True to the word handed down to us, by the holy prophets, these faithful men and women traveled southward, many of whom settled in continental Africa. The captivity 
of continental Africa. Now, this brings us to the third of the four major dispersions of the nation of Israel. That is the captivity of continental Africa. Unlike the Assyrian and Babylonian captivities, there is not a lot of scriptural reference to the captivity of continental Africa. However, there is a great deal of history of this post-migration captivity. Not only this, but a migration southward into continental Africa is the only logical path the children of Israel would have taken at that point in their history. The following interest point, which I will offer in two parts, explains why. First and foremost, and in line with our master's prophecy, there are only two corners of the world that Israel, at that time, had not yet been scattered to, the South and the West, for they were already scattered northward in the Assyrian captivity and eastward in the Babylonian captivity. The Israelites, who heeded the warning of our loving master, obviously did not travel westward, for that would have landed them deeper inside the Roman Empire which they were attempting to avoid. For that reason, the only direction they would have and could have traveled is southward, and they did, and this landed them in continental Africa. Now, history supports this migration as there is ample material evidence that Hebrew Israelites have been living in continental Africa for hundreds of years. And beyond the material evidence, we have the greatest evidence of all, that is, the people. That's right, my friends. There are many Hebrew Israelites living in continental Africa to this very day. And although they may not be in a strict state of captivity, in the time present, there was a period of captivity in continental Africa in times past. Here again, the history is light on this topic. Therefore, you must pray about this matter the same way I have prayed about it. And you must ensure that your conclusions are authored by the Spirit and in line with the Word. the captivity of the Americas. Now, one of the greatest pieces of evidence supporting the conclusion that the third phase of the dispersion of Israel was indeed ushered by the southern wind is sure, and I will offer it as a leading interest point on this matter. I ask you, to consider it carefully. The only corner left in the world at this point in the dispersion is the western corner, and the only land west of Africa are the Americas. This fact brings us front and center with the fourth and final dispersion of Israel, that is, the captivity of the Americas. Tis a captivity that began in more modern times and has continued unto these last days. No doubt, the captivity of the Americas is perhaps the most controversial. Here again, the controversy stems from a crucial reality which I have offered in prior podcasts. And yet, I will offer it again as it speaks to the heart of this dispersion in particular. Not everyone who claims to be a Jew is a descendant of Jacob. Here lies the problem, namely 
as much of our world has been deceived into believing that all the modern day Jews are descendants of Yaakov, many are attempting to understand the history of Israel through the lens of a people and a nation who are not Israel. In doing so, many will reject the historical fact that the fourth dispersion of the nation of Israel was indeed the captivity of the Americas for the simple fact that the Jews were never captives in the Americas. Quite the contrary, the Jews have a largely successful history in this corner of the world. This speaks to the crucial nature of errors which we have discussed in prior podcasts. And yet, I will revisit it to show you just how dangerous it is for any of us to embrace any error or for any of us to believe in a lie. Your embrace of an error is not limited to that error. To wit, there is no physical nor spiritual model in which you are deceived by a single error. On the contrary, every error is not only supported by a host of other errors, each error leads you into more error. Now, the appropriate phrase here is compounded error. That is to say, the error that you have fallen into is compounded. It increases exponentially, progressively leaving you worse off than before. For that reason, it is imperative that we prove all matters to be true. This has always been vital to man's spiritual and physical success, but it is even more vital in these last days. Here is why. Unlike in times past, there will be no opportunity to course correct in these last days. Whatever path you are on is the path where you will remain. For as I have often said before, once the ceiling of the set apart ones has ended, no one's fate can be changed. Therefore, if there ever was a day to measure twice and cut once, that day is today. If there ever was an hour to search the scriptures and validate our claims on everlasting life, that hour is now, and it is fading away. My dear friends, I ask you to hear me carefully. These are the four dispersions of the nation of Israel, and this is the order in which they occurred. The Assyrian captivity, the Babylonian captivity, the captivity of continental Africa, and the captivity of the Americas. I will prove this matter in the upcoming podcast with finality and with the word of truth. Then it will be up to you to pray that the Father reveals this word of truth to you. Now, here is the final word. We were admonished long ago to buy the truth and sell it not. The reason why is sure. In the end and after all, you will get what you paid for. And we were told by men of old that all which glitters is not gold. My dear friends, the enemy has painted a twisted picture of a false reality in a sordid effort to deceive the world, even the chosen elect. And the only way we will defeat him is with the truth, 
which is only being revealed to the chosen elect in these last days by the spirit of Elohim, who will not only bring all things to our remembrance, but he will also reveal to us what is to come. And although this matter is nothing new, only a few remembered while many forgot, the only way to be saved in any day is to buy the truth and sell it not. Now, here is what's next. We completed today's podcast, End Times 244, The People and Places of the Restoration, Part 4. And the next podcast is entitled, End Times 245, The People and Places of the Restoration, Part 5. I will post this podcast on Monday, December 4th, 2023. Until then, my friends, continue to be led by the spirit of Elohim. Continue to watch. Continue to pray. Continue in fasting. And most of all, continue to be focused. For the end is coming. The end is near.